Pressure is mounting for Jersey City Councilwoman Amy DeGuise to resign following a heated meeting last week where residents demanded she give up her seat, but she refuses. Please resign. This will not blow over. When the legal process in traffic court is finished, I will have more to say, and I can address outstanding concerns and questions. And in the meantime, I'm not resigning. Well, Governor Phil Murphy weighed in on the situation, saying the matter has to play out in court before any actions are taken. However, community leaders say this is the last straw for DeGuise. Now, joining us this morning is Hector Oseguera with the Progressive Democrats of Hudson County, They've been uh, collecting signatures to remove the councilwoman from office. So, good morning, Hector. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. First, let me ask you, what do you make of what she said about there's more that is going to come out after this court? plays out. Yeah, I really doubt that. I think that's an excuse. She's really hoping that this blows over so she can sweep it under the rug. And once the court case is over, they'll act like this never happened. So if we don't get her to do something now, I'm absolutely certain that nothing will be said once the court process itself plays out. Mm. So, I mean, and, and for those who are who are confused about this, this is about a hit and run uh, the councilwoman was involved in. Um, now, we saw that that uh, council meeting was packed. How many Jersey City residents have actually signed the petition for uh, her to resign? So a current change.org petition that was started shortly after the hit and run has now hit just about 7,000 signatures. And the vast majority of those are Jersey City residents. However, this is an incident that has countywide and even statewide political implications. So we're asking any single person who's disgusted by what they saw in that video to sign the petition and to show the leaders in Jersey City and in New Jersey that this is absolutely unacceptable behavior by a public official and that this essentially disqualifies her from public service. But again, as we just heard her uh, say, Councilwoman DeGuise is she's refusing to step down. So what are some of the legal steps that you can actually take to remove her from office? And is that process underway already? So there's a recall law in New Jersey that is uh, has a rather high burden. She was elected with just over 18,000 votes. It would require 42,000 Jersey City residents to recall her, and that process cannot officially begin until she's been in office for at least one year, and that'll be this upcoming January. I see. So in the meantime, we're asking for the citizens of Jersey City to sign the petition, and we're going to bring pressure upon Governor Murphy and the mayor of Jersey City, because essentially they're the ones who have the power to tell her to resign in the meantime. Well, you, you also claim that the uh, councilwoman's actions are nothing new. Uh, elaborate on what you mean by that. So shortly after this hit and run, a video surfaced of her pulling political rank in Hoboken, New Jersey, which borders Jersey City. She was going to have her car towed and she told the police officer, you know who my father is and you know that I'm politically connected and you have to let me go. Thankfully, the officer did not bow to those political demands. But there's a saying that who you are is not when people are looking but who you are is what happens when you think nobody is looking mm. and that video truly shows who amy degis is and who the political elites in hudson county think that they are this is something we see happen all the time where powerful politicians engage in brazenly illegal behavior and think that because of who they are they will face no accountability so she makes over two hundred thousand dollars a year and lives in low-income housing. Not only does she live in low-income housing, but her partner does as well, who's a lawyer and a firefighter. So her yeah. and her partner occupy two low-income apartments in one of the most expensive cities in America. There are more and more stories that have come out since. She skipped out on a veterinary bill. She skipped out on her medical bills and had to have her wages garnished to have her pay those bills. So this is something we see happen over and over again. Amy DeGis is just one person. But we see this behavior occur over and over again where the political elites in Hudson County just believe that the laws do not apply to them. Yeah, it's some interesting allegations there. Now, Councilwoman DeGis's father, Hudson County Executive Tom DeGis, now he criticized the way the media has been covering the hit and run involving his daughter. He says, this is what he said, quote, this matter will be adjudicated in a courtroom, not by a lynch mob carrying torches and pitchforks. 
So now the case actually has been moved, right, from Hudson to Essex County. Do you think that's going to make a difference? It's really not going to make a difference. I think your viewers should be aware that this court case had to be moved to Essex County because there's not a single judge in Hudson County who could hear this case without it being a conflict of interest because they're so politically connected. And I really take issue with him describing this as a lynch mob. I don't have a pitchfork or a torch with me. And, you know, the language of a lynch mob is really racialized language. You know, Emmett Till faced a lynch mob. Amy De DeGeese, she hit a cyclist and ran away. She committed a heinous crime. So to say that the citizens asking for accountability are a lynch mob is really racialized language that I take issue with and I, I think is absolutely disgusting. This is not a lynch mob. These are citizens who would like our public officials to be held to a higher standard. Held accountable. Yeah. Uh, what about the cyclist? Has he come forward to, you know, call for the councilwoman's resignation as well? Uh, Andy Black is a really kind-hearted soul. He invited me to a church service yesterday where he reflected upon this incident. And he said, and this is something I absolutely agree with, that nobody is looking for vengeance. You know, I'm a Christian, and the Word of God tells us not to seek vengeance, but to seek justice. And that's all we're looking for. We're asking for somebody who committed a very heinous act to be held accountable and to face the same scrutiny and the same laws that you or I would be held to if we were to commit this act. Nobody wants her to be threatened. Nobody wants her to face death threats or anything of the sort. All we want is for her to be treated the way that you or I would be treated if we did the same thing. So are you going to bring this up again then at next Wednesday City Council meeting? Yes, so we're currently organizing to have the community turn out at the next city council meeting and the one after that and the one after that and the one after that. And we will not let this be swept under the rug. We will bring this up at every single council meeting until her conscience catches up with her and she realizes that the only moral thing to do is to resign. All right, Hector Asegura, thank you so much for your time this morning. And we do want to point out that we did reach out to Councilwoman Amy DeGuise to in her office asking for a statement and we're still waiting to hear back from them. So we're hoping to have her join us live here on the PIX11 Morning News to share her side of the story. But again, we have not heard back from her or her office. Hector, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You All too. Right.